Let's look at Boyd Gaming and run a discounted cash flow model and identify the intrinsic value of the stock. Now, the way we run a discounted cash flow model is we figure out the estimated future free cash flow of a company, discount that back to today's dollars, and then I compare it to what they're currently trading at. So this company has 2.3 Three billion dollars of market cap. That means they have 111 million shares trading at 2092. So we're going to see if the future free cash flow is above 2092. And if it is, we consider this stock a buy. And if it's below 2092, we consider it a sell. So let's look at free cash flow because free cash flow is the cash that's left over after operating a business. So it's kind of like if you own the business this would be what you would receive as the owner. And then you could do whatever you want with it. You can put it back into the business and maybe invest in employees, invest in new products. Um, you can invest in a lot of things or you can keep the money for yourself. That's why analysts look at free cash flow because this tells the entire picture. Net income can be changed a lot with accounting because companies don't always report the cash they receive. They do it on, on an accrual basis. So net income isn't always the best indicator, but you should look at all the numbers and put it together, kind of like a puzzle. Once you put all the pieces together, the picture emerges and then you could really understand it much better. So let's see, they have free cash flow and it's been increasing each year, which is a good sign. Um, so it looks like they're um, generating a good profit and appropriate amount of expenses. The net income, it was really high in 2016 at 400 million, then dropped a lot. So that's not a great sign because um, as you can see, revenue has been increasing year to year. It increased quite a bit while net income dropped. That, that, like I said, it could be accounting issues. Uh, they may be reporting a lot of expenses now that they didn't report in the past. And I'd love to talk more about accrual accounting because I think it's such an important thing for people to know. And leave a comment and I could make a video if anybody was interested. Now we have to understand the capital structure of this company because every company has a different capital structure. Their interest expense is $237 million. So let's see how much debt they have, because we want to see the interest on the debt. And their short-term liabilities are $27 million. That's, that's the debt due within one year, which is a pretty small amount. Now their long-term debt is $3.7 billion, and that's debt due beyond a year. So it looks like they have a little time to pay the debt. And we could check the 10 k to see when it's actually due. It could be due in five years. That's a high interest rate, 6.31%. So at you, you, you see a lot of companies in the 2 3%. So this indicates they're probably a risky company to lend to, and they have to pay a higher interest rate. Now let's find out their effective tax rate. And let's see their income before tax is $200 million, And their income tax is $44 million. So, that, so their effective tax rate, oh boy, is 22%, which looks pretty on par with what I would expect. Now, even though they pay 6.31% interest, they do get a tax deduction on the interest payment because the interest is an expense. So the tax deduction is 22%, and they actually pay 4.92%, so about 5% interest on the debt. And let's find out their cost of equity. And we need to find out that beta, which is the volatility, that's a high beta, which is what I would expect with a company that pays such a high interest rate. Anytime you see a beta over two, it's a pretty volatile stock. And they have to provide more of an, a benefit to its investors when it's volatile and it's risky. So their cost of equity is 19.68%. And then in order to get the weighted average cost of capital, we have to 
combine the weight of debt, which is 62%, and against the weight of equity, which is 38%, with the cost of debt and the cost of equity, and we get a whack of 10.6%, which isn't too bad, but they have a ton of debt, 62% debt, which is really concerning because debt is fine because debt helps you grow the business, but the problem is when you have too much debt and you run into an, a situation like coronavirus when your revenues are lower and you need more debt to pay off the previous debt, then you may have a big problem and be forced into bankruptcy. Now let's apply the WAC to our future estimated free cash flows, which we calculated already from the inputs earlier. And the free cash flow next year we calculate is 386 million. After that is 421, then 460, then 503. And what we do is a terminal value after that, which is all the expected future free cash flows after year four. And the way we calculate the terminal value is similar to the way we calculated the Gordon growth model or the dividend discount model. And you, you can Google that term or look at the formula here if you are interested. Now, the present value of the future cash flows, because obviously cash flow in four years is a lot different than that amount today. So we have to discount at the appropriate discount rate. And then, the, so we calculate the value of this business at $5.7 billion. That's the intrinsic value of the entire company. And now we take that number and we divide it by the shares outstanding of 111 million. And we come up with a stock price of $50.74, which, which sounds high. Um, because they're trading at 21, so they're trading at a pretty big discount. So what, what I'm gonna do, and this is what you have to do as an analyst and as an investor when you look into stocks, is try to identify things that may affect the company. And obviously coronavirus is going to affect this company. And you could even see on their financials, I think I saw it, see the, the trailing 12 months, they list that as well, which is more current than the 1231.19 number. And you can see their, um, they have some negatives, like negative net income. So that indicates either revenues are lower or expenses are higher or both. So it looks like they're already kind of starting to struggle. So let's change the growth rate because we're expecting a 2.5% growth rate on the free cash flows each year. That's just inflation. That's That's a typical number and let's put it to zero because I don't think the growth rate is going to be as significant at least in the short term for the next three to four years so let's put it to zero let's a steady growth like no no real increase um, and that makes the present value 4.6 billion and now we have I think a more appropriate intrinsic value of 41 dollars which is still significantly higher than what it's trading at but it was actually pretty close to where it was trading at pre-coronavirus it was close to, to like low 30s even here it was close to 40 maybe a couple of years ago so this stock is considered a buy according to my discounted cash flow model but everybody has their own opinion and i would love to hear your opinion on this stock and what you feel the situation is. Is it a buy? Is it a sell? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.